Okay, so we are going to make a wingtip. And uh, if we open this up, you can kind of see the washout if you uh, come to the small side. Very subtle washout. And uh, that's really easy to change the angle after the fact if you want to fiddle around with it. But uh, this is what we're going to make in this section. Um, we use the same airfoil we left off with and we go to that skinny tip airfoil. And then uh, after we make this, we'll go through and put the aileron cut and the flap cut and the wheel well cuts. And uh, then we'll make the engine nozzle. And, and uh, that's it. So anyways, um, how to start out on this one? Well, we start out with figuring out what we know and what we don't know. What we do know is um, right here. We want to um, continue this line upwards preferably in line with this one because that will ensure that it's in line. Unfortunately, I um, I badly eyeballed that. So we're going to go through and, uh, yeah, 140 looks better. I'll show you how easy it is to go through and edit a part. Um, you'll see what, what I mean is it, it wasn't lining up. I made my angle too steep, so we're going to uh, decrease our offset by 10 millimeters. So we're going to uh, come into the part we made in the previous section, go into our loft, our offsetted sketch, select that, and make it 140. Once it pops up, 140, and rebuild it. And there you go, it's fixed. So, anyways. Uh, let me sit up here. So we have this. Um, we're going to measure horizontal displacement. In our vertical offset, okay. So let's see. We're going to need to put the airfoil here, a plane offset here to put our tip airfoil, and then we're going to need to move the airfoil that tip airfoil up. 433.08 millimeters and then curve it down two to three degrees. So, gonna make a new. Okay, so we're gonna make a, a new part. And, um, I just don't know why that's doing that. Sometimes, uh, my panel comes off, it's kind of annoying. Um, so we need to set up first the planes from, say, the front plane, and that needs to be offset to 4065. Four zero six five. Okay. And then we need to um, insert our um, our sketch. So tools, blocks, insert. Oh, and we need to um, put a sketch on our front plane for us to insert it on. And then browse and Otis, Cessna, airfoils, and. Uh, Yeah, this one. Put that there. Escape. 
and um, I need to uh, fix this one like we did on the other ones. Uh, let me just edit that out because it is kind of boring, but uh, okay. So I got that fixed. I'll go ahead and leave that in free space and then put this point there. Actually, um, just kidding. We want to um, put the spar along the quarter cord, which I imagine is that that's where they put it because most airfoils have their center of lift on the uh, quarter cord. Um, the quarter cord is just 0.25 times the length of the cord. which our length is supposed to be 5.82 feet, I believe. Yep. Okay, so let's come in and make equals 0.25 star this. And that puts us at exactly at the quarter cord. Okay, so exit. And come back in and edit the sketch. <coughs> Get rid of that coincident and put this coincident to our origin. Okay. So um, exit out of that sketch. Yes. So we are we got that done. Now we need to put a sketch on the front plane or on plane one that we made tools, uh, blocks, insert, a tip airfoil, and I had gone in and fixed this, and I put the quarter cord in. But, uh, well, hold on. I had also mindlessly deleted all my references. Okay, and uh, let's put ourselves in normal. Let's put ourselves vertical. Okay, now this is the important part. Whenever we dimension, we want to do it from our points. We don't want to do it from the lines because uh, otherwise it screws up with our tilt. So we are um, still in this cache. Rotate. about our quarter cord, two degrees, yeah, okay, the, sorry, I was having a lot of trouble with that because I kept uh, dimensioning from this, the cord lines, and then it wouldn't let me rotate it because uh, in order to satisfy the dimension, it had to keep them parallel, but uh, if you dimension it from the point, it'll let you rotate, so now I got it rotated, you can exit the sketch. Um, and now we need to put our uh, guide curves in. So we'll just do 3D sketch. Um, I do a 3D sketch just because uh, it's a lot easier than having to go through and make planes and all that stuff. And all we need is a straight line between these points. Uh, to exit a 3D sketch, you have to press this button over here. I don't know why it's like that. I mean, you think. SolidWorks have put a little bit of consistency throughout their program, but uh, they don't. So, this is one of the weird things about SolidWorks there. So, we need to exit that sketch. Alright, so now we got our skeleton. Uh, and then we go to uh, features, lofted by space. Sketch one, sketch 
Fetch two. Oh, oops, I, uh, I thought I made two 3D sketches instead I made one. Uh, whenever you use guide curves, you have to make sure that each line is its own separate sketch. So right now I made it all in one sketch. So uh, I can't do that for my guide curves. So I thought I exited out, but I guess I didn't. You get to learn from my mistakes. perfect washout. Um, I didn't actually like using that sketch. So. And um, just to show you how easy it is to uh, change the washout, you can come in here and uh, go to rotate. Oh, rotate. Select that entity. And then say instead of two, you wanted to have three, so you'd add on one degree down, or I mean, heck, you could even go to a huge washout angle. Yeah, well, maybe not that huge, but uh, anyways, um, there's the uh. There's that, and then um, once we get the finalized shape, the, the control surfaces and such, we'll uh, mirror it across and we'll have our other wingtip. So this is left wingtip, right wingtip. So um, with that, uh, I think next we will make the uh, either the nozzles or the control surfaces.